Hi, I'm Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 169 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Today I want to talk about something that's really cool that uh, came about a couple of months ago, and that is a new release of iBrows, our favorite web browser on our favorite computers, the Amiga. Now, iBrows has been around for over two decades now, but there was this span of time from like 2006 or so until 2018, 2019, where absolutely nothing happened with it. You couldn't buy it. The website was still there. You could get a demo of it, but you couldn't buy it. You couldn't get a license for it. And it was just kind of in this weird limbo, which was really strange because a lot of us really wanted to spend our hard-earned money on it. Well, then a couple of years ago, they came out with a brand new version of iBrowse, an upgraded version, uh, 2.4, I believe. I did a review on it right there. And all of a sudden, it's like all those years of iBrowse being in this weird limbo where nobody knew what was going on, nobody could update it, totally gone. Now the software is getting updated every couple of months, every two or three months, we get a little bit newer version, a little bit updated version, which is fantastic. And this time we've gone from version 2.5.9 up to version three. Now what's important about that? Well, version three apparently has kind of been out there as kind of maybe the PowerPC Amiga OS 4 version for a while now. And then version 2.5X has been the 68K version that has still been working and still been floating around, but they weren't quite together. They weren't quite a happy family. Well, now the branches have merged and we've only got version 3.0 and above going forward, which means the two branches have finally come together. Now, this is pretty cool because version 3 has some nice enhancements that version 2.59 did not have. So what if you already owned version 2.5 or above? What if you bought it a couple of years ago? Well, the cool thing about that is it's a totally free upgrade. You literally just get on their website, which we're going to do in a minute. You download the update. You run the installer. It even attempts to bring your license over if it can find it. If not, you just copy the license into the new folder and bing, bang, boom, you're licensed. You're up and running. This is fantastic. <clears throat> Now, the other cool thing about this is that there are some great discounts going on right now that make it actually worthwhile. You know what? Let's jump on over to the Amiga itself and take a look. Today, we're going to be browsing on my Amiga 4000 68060 with an Xsurf 100 card, which is a fantastic card. And then we're going to be viewing it on my retargetable graphics card. Now, in all honesty, this thing's running on my Picasso 2 because I like to be able to switch between Amiga graphics and the enhanced RTG graphics, but it's not as fast and as pretty as some of my other retargetable graphics cards. But it does the job. Come on along, let's take a look. So here we are on my lovely Amiga 4000, uh, Amiga OS 3.2.2.1, and uh, lots of chip RAM and lots of fast RAM. We're going to go ahead and launch iBrows, which I have already upgraded, but we're going to get onto the iBrows website. Here we're switching right over to the retargetable graphics screen, and we're going to go to the website iBrows-dev.net, which is the iBrows website. And you'll see, for an Amiga, it's actually pretty zippy getting around to these websites. Now here's the part that's so cool, 30% off. All right. We're going to take a look at the pricing because this usually is a $59 software package. Now, in my humble and personal opinion, should iBrowse be a $60 package for browsing the internet? Absolutely not. There should not be a $60 web browser because web browsers are, are standard software. This should be a, about a $30 product. The guys need to be compensated for the work, absolutely. But when you charge $60 for an Amiga software package, you're gonna get probably one fourth as many customers as if you 
sold it for $30, which means reduce the price. You're going to make more money. But, all right, with this 30% discount, it becomes more reasonable. U.S. dollars, $43.99, much more reasonable than the $60. If you have uh, to get an upgrade, $10.99. If you have version 2.1 to 2.4, $21.99. And if you have eyebrows version 1, $32.99. Okay, much more reasonable prices than before. This is very misleading. Registered eyebrows 2.5, 68K only user upgrade, $10.99. I don't think anybody falls into that camp. Okay, I really don't. Most of us have this registered eyebrows, 68K and PPC version. I don't know anyone who's just got the regular version. So your version is probably free if you've already paid for it. Okay, you can put in your username, you can put in your email address here, and it will find you and make sure that you're qualified for these upgrades. Now, if we go over here to download, this is critical right here. Obviously, we've got Eyebrows 3.0a for Amiga OS 3.1x, okay? Released on uh, in December, all right? December 22nd, looks like. But you have to also upgrade your version of Amy SSL. Right now, it's at version 5.14. You need at least, I think it's 5.12 just to run uh, Eyebrows. Now... What is Amy SSL? Well, that is a collection of certificates that are on the web that make sure you, that websites are who they say they are. We use certificates all the time. Most of the time it's in the background. You don't even notice it. The only time you're going to see anything with certificates is if some company has an expired one. It's going to come up with this message in Google Chrome saying, hey, the certificate's ex expired. Do you really trust them? Amy SSL uses those certificates and updates those certificates to make it so you can actually browse the web without a million error messages. I'm going to download this. Yes, it's overwrite it. So you download that first. And of course, with the Amiga being a multitasking machine, you can also just download eyebrows 3.x at the same time. And it's going to, uh, be able to download both of those without any issues. Uh, 1.7 megabytes, you can see the uh, Xsurf is actually pretty fast. It does a really good job. Once you get those downloaded, let's go ahead and back out into our standard Amiga OS. I put mine in my downloads folder, so we're going to go ahead and go there. We're going to do a little search, find our Amy SSL. You see I have a couple of versions here, but that's the one that we want to decompress. So you're going to use your LHA and then E, Amy SSL dash 5.14 dash OS 3 dot LHA. And of course, I've already done this. I'm just going to decompress and overwrite everything. And those are all of the different certificates. And they apparently get these from some kind of uh, uh, Linux-based uh, certificate program. And we're going to talk in a few minutes about why these are so important and why this is relatively unique in the Amiga community. Now, when it's done, just go to your folder where you downloaded and decompressed it to. And we'll do the install on Amiga Amy ASL. Amy SSL right here. Install for real. Amiga OS 3.x. Yes. 6820, 030, 040, or Vampire, or Morpho OS, or 68060, or Amethlon. Okay. I've got a 68060 in here. It's just going to go ahead and move all of those certificates to the proper libraries, which is just fantastic. Please reboot for modifications to take effect. Okay, we'll do that in a few minutes. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back to our shell and we're going to look at our 
eyebrows. It's L H A E eyebrows three point zero A dash O S three dot L H A and of course we're going to override everything in there because I've already done this. All right, let's find our eyebrows folder that we decompressed this to. And it looks like it went into here. Let's see. Yep, eyebrows three. There's an installer here. We're going to go ahead and use our little installer. And you have to tell it which drawer your original uh, eyebrows is if you're upgrading. I use mine. I've got a drawer called Internet that I put mine in. And you'll see I've actually got eyebrows V2 in here. And then eyebrows version 3 is in there. Reinstalling an existing installation. That's fine. English. What kind of CPU you're using. It's going to do different kinds of libraries depending on what CPU you have. So make the proper choice here. Now, which image set would you like to install? If you have an ECS machine, do 32 color. If you have an AGA machine, you can do 256 colors. Or if you have retargetable graphics, you can do use 256 colors. I'm going to go ahead and do that since I use mine with retargetable graphics. And uh, all of those are fine. Here's important. Which transfer animation would you like to install? 24-bit true color, 8-bit 256 color, or use these if you're using uh, ECS or, or AGA. I'm going to go ahead and do 24-bit because I've got a 24-bit graphics card. Now, it also uses MUI, M-U-I. If you don't have MUI, you need MUI to run eyebrows. It's basically sort of free. And I'll have a link in the description where you download it. You can also download it right from the eyebrows website. And install those MUI classes. Installation complete. Yippee skippy. From here, you would reboot your Amiga. And once you do, you can launch your new eyebrows. Now you'll notice mine, of course, opens up on this uh, high resolution 800 by 600, uh, 65,000 color screen, okay, which is great. But let's say you've got an ECS or you have an AGA Amiga and you want to run it in a different screen mode. No problem at all. Once you load eyebrows and if you, if you just load it by default uh, first time, uh, very possibly it'll just open up in whatever workbench screen you have. But if you want to open it in a custom screen, we can go up here to Preferences. We can go to Screen Mode. And it's going to let you change the screen that you have it on. Mine right now, I've got this Eyebrows uh, Picasso 2 800 by 600 16 bit. Okay. What if I wanted it on my regular work workbench screen? Well, I've got a workbench screen right there. I just click on that. And now. This is opened just on my standard workbench screen, which is kind of cool. We'll just minimize and get that. There you go. Now eyebrows is on my 16 color uh, workbench screen. Pretty cool, huh? You want to put it on a custom screen? Let's make one. But let's say that you want to create a brand new screen mode. Uh, what you do here is now you go into MUI, Magic User Interface, and we've got these the screen option right here. This happens to be MUI version 5. Version 3.8 looks different, but similar enough where you can follow along. We're just going to copy this one we have here. So I'm going to click Copy, and then we're going to see if we can change this. Mode Promotion, nope. And so we have this copy 
um, of this uh, eyebrow screen. Now we can click edit and we should be able to change the screen mode. You see you've got your standard list of screen modes here. Now this particular machine has an uh, MK3 flicker fixer in it from Jens from iComp.day. You can see that I did a video of it. There's a link up in the description. So I could choose any of these AGA screen modes here. So let's use a, 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 a kind of a cool screen mode here. Let's use uh, 1024 by 768 8-bit color. We're going to try that. Now I'm in a 1024 by 768 uh, Amiga screen mode, AGA Amiga screen mode. <laughs> you can see it's just slightly slower than the retargetable graphics mode on my, my Picasso 2. <laughs> but hey, the Amiga can do it. It can generate it. As long as you've got the hardware to support it, it can do it. Now that is a uh, just a hair faster, don't you think? If the screen refreshes when we move things around, yeah, AGA is great, but uh, yeah, retargetable graphics is a lot faster with stuff like this. Now, what can we do now that we're online and we've got a, uh, our eyebrows up and running? Of course, there's a ton of websites you can go to that are incredibly useful including AmyNet, which is fully functional with eyebrows and really, really fast. What do we have here? Uh, eight ham graphics converter. That's kind of cool. Slot games. Ooh, Amiga RTG port of Scum VMM. That's cool. So any AmyNet um, link is going to work just fine. You can download things right from AmyNet. Um, a lot of websites that are dedicated to the Amiga actually work really well on eyebrows. Like here's Amiga.org, which is uh, one of all of our favorite websites hosted by our friends with uh, at Amiga Kit. And it actually works pretty darn good. You can see down in the lower right hand corner here. These are all the separate little threads it has open and, and connections that it's uh, downloading from. Yep, uh, SAC March meeting, there we go, Amiga Bruno, Amiga Hardware Issues and Discussion. So you can get on to Amiga.org and do just about anything you want to. Uh, other websites like uh, Google works just fine. Okay, comes up with a modern Google image. Let's look up 10 minute... Amiga Retrocast and see what Google says about us here. Hey, look at that. Information about good old me. Hey, look at that handsome bloke down there. A video from August 19th, 2018. My first video. Uh, oh, here's one. Where on earth has 10 Mark been? A tour of the new Amiga studio. <laughs> yeah. Now, other things like Gmail, these used to work on here, but they don't anymore. So if we try to go to Gmail and we try to log in, it just gives us an error. Now I talked to the guys um, uh, a couple of months back, actually it's probably about two years ago, and they said, oh yeah, we can still get into Gmail, and then all of a sudden they couldn't either. Couldn't sign you in. Doesn't support JavaScript or JavaScript turned off. Well, yeah, it does support JavaScript. It just hates this browser. So you're going to have some issues with some email, but other services work. Now, let me show you a couple of cool resources. Our good friend, Sean from Action Retro. Link in the description. Huh, I spelled it wrong. He created a couple of these sites. One of them is called FrogFind. And if I actually type it correctly, you can get to it. This is a search engine for vintage computers built by Action Retro. Check out his website. He's a great guy. He and I had uh, lunch together a couple weeks back at, uh, at VCF SoCal. So let's see what we can find here. Let's see. 
Um, Amiga computer in Frog Find. And what he basically does is he takes uh, the, the search engine um, DuckDuckGo and he's got it running through a server and he strips out a bunch of the graphics and everything like that to make it a more presentable display. Here it is. History of Amiga. Ars Technica. Not bad. And look at that. The performance is fine. The performance of this thing is fine. People still use Amiga today. New Amiga documentary shows why. How nice, huh? He also built this other cool thing called 68k.news. And what this does is this grabs Google News headlines and strips out all the graphics and all the extraneous stuff. So it creates a basic HTML web browser for cool news stuff. Let's see, uh, Alex Garland, Gators, Mika Hangleton suffers fractured leg. Oh, poor guy. Jupiter unveiled. Hubble captures the giant roaring storms and volcanic moons. That sounds good. Let's see if we can read that. See, and it strips out all the, the extraneous stuff and gets right to the news article. That's pretty cool, huh? So it makes it actually quite useful. PS5, <coughs> PS5 Pro could blow away Xbox on GTA 6 performance. Okay, I right, probably could. Now, while things like Twitter used to work okay with the mobile web browsers, they don't anymore. But last I check, the mobile Facebook version does work. Let's see if it still does. M.Facebook.com. Here we go. That's me. Oh, geez. Now you know my password. It's a series of dots. You're now interacting with Douglas Compton. Yep. So getting on the old facey bookie. So you can go through here and uh, look at all the messages going on and my Facebook profile. Hey, look at this guy. Ha! Huh. Found this picture of Taylor when he went to Norwich, UK in December 21 from Jack Kalk. <laughs> oh, good old Taylor. He's a great guy. Was He was... Uh, I miss him. Now let's go to this fantastic... Uh, website called Commodore Computer Central, which I run. This is the uh, one of the uh, the Facebook pages that I run, Commodore Computer Central, and we can go and look at all the stuff on here. Hey, there's another one from Jack from Pints and Amiga. Write something. Hey, everyone. I am posting this from Eyebrows 3.0a on my Amiga 4000 for my latest video. I hope you all have a great day and subscribe to 10 minute Amiga Retrocast. Okay, so we're actually going to post this right from the Amiga, right onto the Facebook group. So go ahead and uh, join Commodore Computer Central and you can see the message that I posted in which I probably... Yes, I made a couple of uh, errors on there. Good job, Doug. So we talked for a little bit about this uh, Eyebrows 2 and Eyebrows 3 unification, which is fantastic, but it's got a new reimagined HTML parser. It's a faster and more efficient and expandable HTML parser, originally designed for Eyebrows 3, and they added some support for missing HTML 4.01 tags and attributes. So they improved the engine, in, they improved a hot list multi-aliasing. When entering a hot list alias as a URL, all your 
URLs matching the alias will be opened in their own browser tab. Huh, okay. Um, a couple more little patches here. Better GIF animation playback, that's nice. Uh, Amiga OS 3.2 context sensitive mouse pointers, that's handy. Uh, some updated uh, uh, MUI stuff with NList. Updated preferences, uh, which makes sense. Uh, better decompression and image decoding libraries and uh, space saving and better efficiency and uh, better optimized code, which is really, really cool. I just hope it continues uh, getting better and better as time goes on. Now let's talk about what makes eyebrows fairly unique in the retro community. Now I've got a cool uh, Macintosh from about 2002. It's a laptop. I've uh, displayed it, I think, on one of my shows once. Um, I decided to download Firefox, the, the last version that was made for that version that, that ran on that. And I downloaded Internet Explorer and I downloaded Safari and the experience was horrible. And that's because none of the certificates were valid. The, the, the certificates that were built into those old 20 year old versions of the web browser, they were all expired, all invalid. Websites just wouldn't even try to work. So it's strange but I have better luck browsing the web on my Amiga from 1994 than I did on my Macintosh using Firefox and Internet Explorer and Safari. It's crazy, and that's because the certificates are not kept up to date even for those old browsers. We are blessed, we are lucky, we are fortunate that these guys are keeping the SSL uh, certificates updated for Amiga OS and Morph OS. That is a good thing that they're doing it. It makes it so many of these websites, even though they're not going to be as pretty as if you could watch them on your, you know, i7 or your M2 Mac or whatever, they work. They function because of the hard work these guys do. Now, I get it that part of the reason that eyebrows is so expensive is because they, they're supporting this Amy SSL product. I get that, I totally do. But I also encourage all of you to support these guys directly. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can directly support the guys working on importing and updating all these, these SSL certificates, which actually make our products work good. Throw them a few bucks, that's all. Throw them 10 bucks, throw them 15 bucks. Is eyebrows worth it on the Amiga? Absolutely. If you've got your Amiga online, uh, drop the 45 bucks to get the latest version of eyebrows if you don't already own the older version. If you already own version 2.5, get the free update. It's totally free. It's faster than 2.5.9. I can feel it when I'm working around in it that, yeah, it is. It's, it's noticeably and appreciably faster. Is it as fast as my uh, AMD Ryzen machine sitting next to me over here? Not quite, but it's usable. Do I really use the internet on my Amigas? Absolutely. 70% of the, the time, it's downloading something from AmyNet, to be perfectly honest. That's what I'm doing, is I'm getting the latest stuff from AmyNet. But it works great. But it's also fun to check the news online. It's also fun to go get onto some of these forums on, that we use online and actually post and do things from your Amiga. It's kind of fun. Now, how about on these on your slower Amigas, or maybe your Amiga is just a Amiga 500 with an accelerator. Is eyebrow still gonna be cool even if you don't have a 24-bit accelerator? Absolutely. Seriously, you can use eyebrows in 640 by 400, uh, eight color mode, works fine. Go to some of these more text-based websites. The speed is okay, you know, the updates are okay. It's really not bad. If you've got an AGA machine, try it in 64 color or even 128 color mode. It's faster than the 256 color modes and it still looks pretty good. The, the images look pretty good on the screen. It's really not too bad. If you've got retargetable graphics, there's no excuse not to use that with eyebrows. It looks gorgeous. Huge thanks to my wonderful patrons who you see scrolling over this, uh, another addition to Amiga Art Contest, which we're gonna be hopefully doing soon. Um, please, if you're interested, pop over to, to patreon.com forward slash 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast and join in the fun. Thanks, everybody.
I know that using a computer that's 30 years old for browsing the web is a little bit silly. But in all honesty, just using these computers that are 30 years old is a little bit silly, you know? But it's what we do, it's what we love. And if we can do it, why not enjoy it? Support these guys, it's great. Uh, please, 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 please like and subscribe. That really helps my, my, uh, my show. Please comment too. I love to talk to you guys. I love to interact with you uh, in the comments. Tell me what web browser you use. Tell me what you use to browse the web for on your Amiga. I'm always looking for new websites that work well with the Amiga. I think that's fantastic. But until next time, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, signing out.